All right, good evening. Hope everyone is well and doing awesome. We are continuing our Wednesday night recharge study, going through the names of God. And last week we started uh, with Elohim. And does anyone remember what Elohim means? The mighty one, right? The creator, the mighty one, specifically, as seen in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, Elohim. Well, this evening, uh, we will be introduced to uh, God's name, Yahweh. Um, let, me, let me get some of the technical uh, stuff out of the way. Um, you, you might know this name from uh, Jehovah. Um, the Hebrew pronunciation, we are not certain of. We know the four letters. Uh, when you write in Hebrew, especially uh, in the ancient times, uh, Hebrew has consonants and then it has vowel pronunciations above or below. And... Um, uh, in ancient times, they didn't supply the vowels, okay? So uh, it wasn't recorded. And because the Hebrews um, did not pronounce God's name customarily, uh, they didn't pronounce it in fear of saying his name in vain. They did not want to uh, show any sort of lack of respect. The actual pronunciation of these four letters is not certainly known, okay? Uh, the four letters, it's called the uh, Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, or uh, yad He va He in Hebrew, okay? Uh, then the, the name means he who exists. Now, FYI, a quick aside while I'm on the technical aspects of this, uh, there are certain people, specifically Jehovah's Witness, who insist that the name must be pronounced Jehovah. And, and if you're not pronouncing it Jehovah, you, you can't be saved, so, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, the, the problem with that is the, the only way you get to Jehovah is if you go from Hebrew into Latin. And Latin doesn't have a Y. And so in Latin, the Y sound is made with a J. And then if you go from Latin to English, that's how you get Jehovah, okay? Um, you, you fill in the vowels, but that's where they get the J sound from. Hebrew doesn't have a J sound. So we're confident that it was it. I mean, you can supply your own vowels. Uh, most people pronounce and scholars uh, are pretty confident that it is Yahweh. Uh, it, it could be uh, Yahovah or something like that. Um, either way, okay? But the name means he who exists. He who is. I am who I am. The self-sufficient eternal one who was and is and is to come. You see, you and I are forever changing. We're getting older. Our hair is getting grayer or it's just falling out. It could be gone. You are getting wrinkles. Your skin is sagging. Your memory is not what it once used to be. I remember when I was younger, I longed to be older. I longed to be in my 20s. Right? And so all of that time, time felt so slow. When am I going to get older? When am I going to be in my 20s? And then the 20s come, and you're like, all right, I'm finally here. Now stop. <laughs> but time doesn't stop. In fact, what you find is that it only speeds up. Right? Now you can do two, five years just standing on your head. You're like, this is nothing. Okay? We are forever changing. Yahweh is always in the present. He 
always is. The self-sufficient. You and I are dependent. He is not. He is who he is. He is never changing. Malachi 3, 6. For I, Yahweh, do not change. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am who I am. You see, we do not define him. He is. He is not malleable and and we can conform him into whatever we want him to be. I am who I am. He appeared to Moses in the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3 called Moses closer, and he told Moses that he was going to send him to rescue the people of Israel. And Moses, out of fear for his own safety, for his own inadequacy, for this task that God had placed him on, he felt completely insufficient. He began to come up with questions and excuses. And one of the questions that he had for God was, what if the people ask Uh, Ask me, who sent me? What is his name? And God, at that moment, declared his name. He said, my name is Yahweh. He who is. I am that I am. Who else could say that? Right? I am the self-existent, eternal one. And and he tells Moses, you are going to stand before Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh that Yahweh says, let my people go. And and Moses is going to do that. And Pharaoh's response is, who is Yahweh? Oh, well, you're going to find out, Pharaoh, because I know, I know you've got the sun god, and you've got, uh, you've got the, the water and the river god, and you've got all these other gods, but you are about to find out there is one true god. There is only one who can say, I am that I am. I am before and present and into the, the I am above every other god. What a name. I am that I am. And yet, when you read Exodus chapter 3, you realize that this God is personal. He shows up to Moses in a burning bush. Moses, by the way, has fled from Egypt because he killed someone. He is out there for 40 years hiding. And God appears to him in a burning bush. There is a bush that is burning, and Moses walks over with curiosity. And then God begins to speak and to call and to draw him near. I articulate this because you must understand the only one who can say, I am who I am, is at the same time personal. He is at the same time personal. In fact, you may not know this uh, when you read through your English versions of the Bible. By the way, any time in your English versions that the letters are in all caps, that is the Hebrew means that it says Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, okay? That it's God's name. It's the most common name in the Old Testament. And in Exodus 3, even though at that point uh, God says, you haven't known me by my name yet, and now I will tell it to you, the name Yahweh actually appears in Genesis chapter 2, okay? Um, The reason for that, Moses wrote the whole thing, okay? So this unfolding of God's name... uh, happens when he comes to Moses and Moses declares it. But as Moses goes back and writes, even though God is the author of creation, Elohim is the author of creation in Genesis chapter one, when things get very 
personal in chapter two. When man is formed, it's Yahweh. When the garden is planted, it's Yahweh. Cause to grow, Yahweh. Took the man and put him into the garden. That was Yahweh. Commanded the man, formed every beast and brought them to the man. Caused a deep sleep to fall on the man. Uh, Took one of his ribs and, and closed up his flesh and fashioned the woman. 21 and verse 22. All of that, the interacting, the uh, the closeness and the near, the personalness is Yahweh. You see, it's a personal name. Let me illustrate it to you like this. Every instance in the Bible where someone is allowed to see a vision of God okay, that's Isaiah 6, Ezekiel 1, Revelation 4. They they get to see a vision of God. And if you pay attention to those visions, there's never a description of God himself. It's always everything around him, the throne that he sits upon, the seraphim. There's bright light or reflected rainbow and colors. It's everything else. Why? Because how do you describe a God who dwells in unapproachable light? How do you describe a God who speaks and all of creation is formed? How do you describe a God who is self-sufficient, who is eternal, who is omnipresent? How do you describe a God who demands that you make no image of him? How do you describe a God who tells you his name and he says, I am who I am? And yet, as we go through this study of the names of God, we will realize Yahweh is personal, that he is self-revealing, that he is a God who draws near. And we will find that he will use this name Yahweh, and then he will tack on attributes with it. To describe himself, Yahweh Yireh, Yahweh is one who provides, Yahweh Shalom, Yahweh is one who provides peace, Yahweh Nisi, Yahweh is the one who is our banner, he is the one who fights for us. You see, God says that I will describe myself to you. I will reveal myself. Allow me to paint the picture. I will send you my son. Colossians 1.15. He who is the image of the invisible God. Hebrews 1.3. He is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature. So the only one who can say, My name is I am who I am. Invites us to come and taste and see the God who is. Will you pray with me? Yahweh. Yahweh is your name. And we praise you. There is no God like you. No one like you. You reign above them all. There is no one like you. And you are a God who draws near to us. What is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that you would send your son to die for him so that we would know you, so that we could walk with you, so that we could have peace with you? There is no God who provides like you. Yahweh Yireh, there is no one like you. We thank you that we can call you Father through your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray, amen.